Yep, great. Uh, so I'm Brooks Hanson. I'm an executive vice president for science here at EGU. Um, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to our, our building. And if, if some of you are EGU members, it's your building. And even if it's not, it could be your building today. Um, and uh, it, it's great also to have uh, this conference, the I Annotate conference here. Um, in Washington, D.C. I attended, I don't think it was the first, it was the second or third, and then the fourth or fifth, and a couple others, and it's always been a very inspiring uh, meeting for me and for AGU, and uh, it's going to be great to participate and listen and, and learn ag again um, over the next couple days. Um, so as Nate mentioned, uh, this is one of the first renovated, it is the first renovated net zero building in DC, one of the first in the country. So I encourage you to take a tour. We have a whole variety of really cool systems to um, maximize energy in a very small city footprint. Um, the water is recycled. So actually, if you'll see in the toilets, a little off-colored water, that's not the drinking water, but it is uh, uh, collected rainwater that we use for um, non-portable um, water supply, including the gardening and stuff like that. Um, and there's a, there's a cool little poop thermal um, heat exchanger where we've tapped into the DC um, sewers. You'll so hear all about that. That tour. was a permitting nightmare, but we managed to get it done with the support of the DC government. So that's just one of, of a number of interesting um, energy, uh, and energy collection um, exchange systems that we have here. Um, also, just a couple things. Uh, we are trying to practice not just net zero in energy, but in consumables. So you'll also read about how we recycled much of the materials. Um, a lot of the, the silverware is recyclable. The little plastic cups are is compost, compostable, and the little plastic cups are made out of corn, and those are also compostable also. So um, in the back of this room and out by the food, you'll see both a trash and a compost. Um, bins, please, if you can, be conscious and put the compostable items in the compostable bins and the, the non-ones in the trash or, or otherwise recyclable bins. Um, so AGU is uh, not only trying to um, kind of live our, our mission in this building, but in a lot of our activities. We've been leading an effort to uh, promote um, fair and open data in the earth and space sciences and are extending it to out to other sciences now. So fair is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. A key part of that will be moving scientific data from PDF supplements actually to repositories and landing pages. One point of that is so that um, actually those pages can be annotated very easily uh, and exposed. Um, similarly, we're going to make the data of this building um, available and open um, through the same sort of process. Um, and uh, you know, again, so that, that um, folks can understand, the public can understand how, how this building works. Um, we want to run one of the largest scientific meetings in the world. Um, it was here in Washington, D.C. last year. It'll be in San Francisco this year. Um, we hit almost 30,000 people um, Earth and Space Sciences and many more policymakers and others last year. Um, we're now uh, trying to lead the scientific community in getting carbon footprints for large meetings like that. We try to recycle as much as we can at those meetings, but are working with the hotel industry to expose their data um, for understanding the carbon footprint of those meetings, including um, travel eventually. Um, we understand that's a, a, a big issue and having actionable data on that uh, that the public can understand and the scientific community can use and that the industry can use to optimize their common for print is really important. Um, we've implemented uh, annotations in some of our peer review process and we're about to do it on a preprint server that we're helped start in the earth and space sciences. So again, all of that is trying to, to uh, expand open science. Um, we're also really excited to have this conference uh, here and, and welcome it. And I think, uh, you know, this is a very important time. It's interesting that it is the 30th anniversary of the web um, and that uh, when you review the highlights on the back of the T-shirt that this meeting is actually one of those highlights. I thought that was good um, because I think it's appropriate. Uh, you know, the web, it's amazing for those of us that have watched this, you know, rapid evolution um, over the past... 30 years when, um, when it was first implemented to um, 
from the science perspective when journals became online and then processes became online. But it's essentially the, the backbone right now of how we work, how we uh, gather information, how we connect, how we communicate, how we learn, how we have fun in some cases, how we engage, uh, how we consume, how we shop, etc. cetera. Um, and so, but it could be a lot better. And um, I, I think at, at, at this point, the unleashed uh, model for annotation is quite appropriate for, um, for that improvement. Um, we're also facing some really serious issues as a result um, in integrity, in misinformation and fake news, um, in how we engage, in privacy, uh, in facilitating citizen science, in education, improving education and learning, and in, in our kind of social structure and connections in, in our government. So all of those are obviously highly connected with the web at 30. Um, and with improving that, and I hope to hear over the course of the next couple of days, not only deep dives into some of these important um, technology improvements and um, improvements in how we use the web, but some discussion of some of these larger issues that we're facing. And I think, um, I think this effort and your effort and being <coughs> open um, is really key to um, addressing many of these. So I look forward to the discussion, and I'll turn it over to Dan. Thank you.